Hey there guys and welcome back to the Two Players Podcast, episode 34. We're going to be talking about the news. There's not much of it, but there is a lot of substance within these pieces of news. Then we're going to get into games we've been playing recently. I personally have been playing a lot. And then uh, we're going to talk about Guardians of the Galaxy 2 for like 10 to 15 minutes or something like that. So the first piece of news is that Project Rabbit, it is a Kickstarter project from the creators of Parappa the Rapper and Guitaro Man. Uh, they are planning on making a game together and it is called Project Rabbit right now. So, um, I mean, I have some experience with the Parappa the Rapper series, so I guess I'll let you go first. Wait, this Kickstarter needs a million? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, well, I never played Parappa the Rapper. Uh, I, I did heard the, uh, what you call it, didn't they port it to the PS4 or something? Yeah, they recently remastered the original Parappa the Rapper on okay. there. So, this is, like, another thing, like, a ukulele or a Mighty Number no. 9, where it's, like, it's sort of, like, that thing, but it's not that thing. And, I mean, they can't really mess this up too hard, since it's not as big of a scale as those games. It's just, like, you know, it's a rhythm game. Like, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> I think it shouldn't be too hard to do something like this. Of course, if they get that one million goal, yeah, which um, is... they are very ambitious with their goal, I would say, because... Parappa the Rapper and even Guitar Romand, uh, they are two very obscure franchises to people. You know, they have, like, dedicated fan bases, I think, especially yeah. in Parappa, but um, freaking $1 million, I don't, I don't think they'll reach it, to be honest. No, that is a lot of money Yeah, there, that's actually, a lot bro. of money, and, like, for what they're offering, I think it's, like, only six levels or something like that. Yeah. And, like, the like... game... The game itself, if you like buy it, I think it's like forty dollars. Forty dollars digitally, and then forty five if you want it physical. Forty dollars. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're like a huge fan of both of these franchises, you you probably already have you know heard of this and probably already donated and, and stuff. But um, I just want to go and wait and see exactly if they'll reach their goal because I'm like i like parappa but like i don't like it that much where i want to fund a spiritual successor to it i much rather have like a parappa three because you know it ended on two and i think ending on two is a little bit weird but yeah um, i do have guitar roman i believe actually i don't know i think i have a different rhythm game that i bought a while ago but um i've never played guitar roman but i've seen it and um yeah, so this is is definitely going to be a very ambitious project, and I I would not be surprised if it does not reach the, their goal. Yeah, that's a that's a lot yeah. for it, just like a little bit. It's like over there. like a little bit over one mil, so it's it's a little crazy. Yeah, I don't I, I don't know about that one. I hope I hope it does it. They still have like a month, but damn, dude, that is a lot of money. Yeah. Alright, so the next story is Sega plans to revive the old franchises, which is about time, since I don't think Sega really has done anything besides Sonic for, like, ever. Yeah, it's been a while, because, like, I think they're scared if they do something new, they think they're screwed after that. Like, once once they make something new and it fails, they're, like, donezo. So, they've been just doing with Sonic for a while, and, you know, after Sonic Boom, he... You know, they reconsidered and now they're doing, you know, Sonic Mania, Sonic Forces, and now they're looking to revive old franchises, which is a good thing because, you know, some of these franchises have not seen the light of day in quite some time. Um, so I'm very excited to go and see exactly which ones they pick and choose from to go and bring back. Yeah, because right now Atlas, which they bought Atlas, which is weird, is like, you know, I don't, I don't really know, man. Like, Sega hasn't been doing anything besides Sonic forever, so like... I, I'm kind of glad because a lot of these franchises haven't seen the game since like Dreamcast. So, what was that one like Smash Bros. game on the Dreamcast or or whatever? Uh, uh Power Power Stone. Yeah, I believe so. So like, if they yeah. do like a modern day Power Stone and like you know readjust the gameplay a little bit, because I would imagine it if they just like straight up did like a remake of it, it'd probably sell. But like you know, if 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 they want to like make sequels to it and stuff like that. Yeah, like um, I know Sega Sega. Does Sega own Platinum? Um, or like the publish for Platinum or something? They've worked with them, but I don't yeah, think so, I don't think Sega owns them necessarily. Well, they don't own them, but they like publish this stuff. Yeah. I think Bayonetta. If I check on the Steam page, I think. Yeah, I think uh, they publish. Yeah, they definitely published uh, the the original yeah, so Bayonetta. It's like <laughs> all these other sub companies are doing way more than Sega itself, so it's weird. So like they haven't actually made games for quite a while. Only Sonic. 
they've just been a so, publisher they haven't been a developer in a long time yeah so I- i'm glad that they're actually reviving new stuff like um yeah, I can't. I can't think of the last thing that they have actually done besides Sonic. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, been a while. The last Jet Set Radio was like for the original Xbox, and then it kind of just ended there for all the old, um, old stuff. They like uh, ported them onto like newer consoles and stuff like that, but yeah, they but that's been doing about much. it. Yeah, like Panzer Dragoon, Shining Force, and stuff like that. It's just been lost forever. So. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it'll be cool to see those uh, franchises come back yeah that would definitely be very nice all right so the next piece of news um this was this is very weird um sonic forces you can now customize your own character and he will join the forces uh along with sonic and classic sonic so um pretty much everyone memed the shit out of this uh you know uh give me an art uh fan creators like if you've been part of the sonic community for a while you've seen people draw their own characters you may have even been one of those people um personally i've never done it myself i've always like wrote like type my name on google and then the hedgehog that just laughed at all of the creations that people have made so um it's it's definitely going to be very interesting i'm just wondering on what customizable options there are and stuff like that but um yeah i'm just i'm just waiting to see all right, so I think I think it's pretty like weird. They're like, going for the whole Xenoverse thing where you can make your own character, and I think it's pretty smart since I'm pretty sure a lot of people are like I want to make my OC in the game, just like in Dragon Ball. But it's still a little weird. It doesn't feel that out of place since they're going for like the whole like, oh Eggman's destroying everything, I guess, and like the little other creatures want to help out or something. I don't know. Yeah, it, it is a little weird. Like I don't know how they're gonna integrate it that well into the the plot i guess i don't really care about the plot but it's still gonna be a little cringy i guess <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> you see like, uh, here's my take on it all right so with dragon ball z like it's for a much more mature audience and people who have made their own like um characters within the dragon ball z universe they can kind of draw like i like if i ever really like, looked up like a character like a fan character that someone has made like it didn't look that bad, but, like, the problem with Sonic is that there's a lot of, like, DeviantArt and young kids that, like, make their own, like, Sonic characters, and, like, it kind of looks bad and cringy and funny. So, that's sort of what they're doing with this game, but it's just that, obviously, you're not going to be drawing it. You're going to be picking from various options, and, you know, I, I'm probably going to just, like, make it look as cool as possible or, like, I don't know, sort of make it look like, look it like me or something like that. I don't know exactly what I'll do, but... Once the game comes out and, you know, I'm I'm in that customization menu, I'll definitely uh, choose what I want to do from there. Yeah, the uh, the gameplay for this character is also going to be, like, using gadgets and stuff. Like, he's going to have, like, a grappling hook mm-hmm. and a flamethrower and stuff like that, which I, I don't know how different that's going to be from just, like, modern Sonic or classic Sonic, since it seems to be doing both 3D and 2D when you're playing the custom character. So I don't know how well that's going to play. Yeah. But um, I I think it could work. Um, the uh guys at Brain Scratch, like uh, some of them were like, it looked like Ratchet and Clank for a second, which I can kind of see, you know, with like the grappling hook and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that's gonna be interesting on how well they do it though, because you know this is this is another gameplay uh style sort of that they're implementing you know with classic sonic minor sonic and now your own customizable character so um i am happy that they are keeping like this is still like sonic like it's still going fast and you know jumping on stuff you know it's not like the werehog or something like that was totally different like it's still like it's still the same thing it just is slightly different Mm -hmm. so I, i i am a little happy for that yeah it's it's still consistent with the uh, Sonic formula that everyone's, you know, used to with, you know, everything being fast and stuff like that, so. Yeah, so I- I'm glad they're, they're still keeping with that, but, you know, I we just gotta wait for that to come out. It could either be a mess or be okay. I don't think it's gonna be great, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Alright, so, <laughs> the ARMS Direct, this was kind of just, like, the Direct from last time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just for, like, kind a few of. new characters. Yeah, it's... it's- it's just that they went more in depth about like stuff, I guess you know, like the whole like first half of the whole arms thing. Like we already know you could switch arms and stuff. Like that was kind they of. It went like, into the lore though. <laughs> we did went. All right, so we got like what, like three new characters or something. You got Dogbot, you got Thick Lady, and you got. Uh, <laughs> That's not who else. Uh, the uh, green glob looking character. Oh uh, yeah, that'd the, be, that yeah. guy, I think. 
you know. I think so. So uh, the uh, police officer with his dog, people instantly made jokes with like Rosalina and Ice Climbers. So and yeah, then the, you uh, could say it's like a Megazord. He could yeah. go on top of it. Oh no, no, also like Liz- there's Lizard Boy. Oh yeah, 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 he, yeah. he's a thing too. But um, yeah, so it's ten characters. Yeah, yeah, I think there's ten characters to start off with, and then um, the uh, obviously the uh, thick girl with the hair. Um, yeah, everyone dude. was just memeing the shit out of her. It, right, right when she showed up in Twitch yeah. chat, just Craig gas. <laughs> <laughs> they did, um, they did talk about the single player. So it's gonna be uh, an arcade mode, like Street Fighter. Like you know, you fight ten people and you fight the boss. So it's not that like in, it's not like Splatoon where the single player was pretty good. This one looks like it's gonna be a standard uh, fighting game single player, which is fine, I guess. But they also went to like some of the different modes you could do. It's like there's like a volleyball oh, yeah. mode. There's like a volleyball there's... mode. There's like a mode where you dunk the other person. Yeah, that one looks fun though. Yeah, I yeah, like that one. That one like so troll, but you know. And then um, the thing that I'm most excited for is that there's gonna be a global test fire of this game. Yes. And um, they have several dates. So May 26, Friday. That's for North America only. Then. 27 28 and then uh the second on june of friday that's for north america only and then third and fourth so there's actually gonna be like two weeks in a row for arms to have like this global test punch you know test fire thing like they did with splatoon which i like you know i i hope that nintendo just keeps doing this with their games that are you know multiplayer based and you don't have online features and stuff like that so um i can't wait for this to happen because you know this is a new ip and this could definitely uh, push me over the edge and you know just make me want to buy arms at launch maybe so um, yeah um i still think oh there's also gonna be free updates like oh yeah Splatoon and how there's doing. gonna be free updates with like uh free characters free stages you know like free everything so but this game looks a lot more complete than splatoon did at launch i would say that is very true yeah so um i'm glad that they are you know completing the game fully and then you know they're like hey man you know when we do make new stuff it's gonna be free so um, if this game does well, we'll see a lot of updates from this game. Yeah, I mean, I'm still a little, like, not that excited. Like, I was like that for Splatoon also, and then I loved it. So I'm probably just going to wait a little bit uh, until I get this game. But and maybe until I try it out and see how good it feels. Yeah, but, um, just, like, try out the uh, test punch, and then we can just talk about it and see exactly on how good it is. Yeah, so, um, but from what they did show, it, is, it does look good. Um, I still think that i don't know man it's just like i, I just have to play it because I, I don't know how how it's gonna feel yeah because it's just such a weird game like i don't know because i think you actually use both of the joy cons and you like punch and stuff i think i think that it's still like motion control based or whatever i'm um, pretty yeah so but um it's it's i they're really giving it the splatoon treatment where it's like you know the whole test fires the whole free updates they're really doing that because this is like the second multiplayer really only game and you know instead of doing the third person shooter they're doing a uh, fighting game just with a different twist on it like splatoon was inked the territory and stuff and this one is like you have wacky arms so yeah uh, i think I, I like it but you know we just gotta see yeah uh, if, have to if wait. it could get because i know splatoon is like really big in japan like super big so yeah let's also see this that splatoon trailer at the end i did not know what the oh. hell was going on it, it was uh, showing the single player stages which looks really cool you can like grind around yeah stuff. the uh the uh, single player definitely looks a lot of fun. Yeah, the single player in the first one was really good, too. It was just pretty short. This one looks like it's going to be really good, too. I hope it's a little longer, since yeah. I really like the single player in the Splatoon 1. The final boss was great. So, uh, yeah, I mean, not much to go off in this direct, but it's just a little thing before, you know, E3. It's like, hey, you know, there's like, there's more info on this game, and, you know, it. if they spent, like, half of the E3 show doing ARMS, I think a lot of people would have been upset, so I'm glad that they decided to get this out of the way and, you know, just, like, give us all the info that we needed. Yeah, because I don't think we're going like, to... I think this is everything ARMS has to offer. Like, I don't think you can really show much anymore. <laughs> like, you know, this is everything ARMS has. Like, there's no real... Like, there might be another trailer, like, um, when E3 comes around, but that's about it. Because I think it's coming out when E3... When is this game coming out? June what? Uh, 19th or something? I don't know. I think June so. 10th? Let me just look it up. Arms. June something. Uh, uh, that's the Nintendo website. Let me just go there see if they get the release date. But I think it is in June, or because Splatoon is in July, uh, yeah. June sixteenth. Okay, right. so yeah, so, they might show a launch trailer in uh, E three, and that's about it. Since you that's know. actually less than a month, so that's pretty pretty exciting. Yeah, so uh, that's Arms. I, I still don't know if I'm gonna get it day one. I might get it because I do really want Splatoon, 
Yeah, same. So, um, I'll probably hold off on arms till like holiday or something. Uh, I'll see. But um, yeah, it, it looks good. You know, I I, I used to hate. Because when Splatoon came out, I was super, like, I hated it. I'm like, this looks so stupid, and I hate it. And oh, then I yeah. played it, and it was uh, great. Squid Kids, ah, uh, this is so cringy, but then it's yeah, like, so, wait, it's actually super fun. Yeah, so ARMS, I'm, I'm just holding off my judgment until it actually comes out, since I, I learned my lesson. So, yeah. And then the last piece of news is that Kevin Feige, I believe he is, like, uh, the producer for most of the Marvel movies, uh, he plans on eventually getting all of the Marvel characters back, which is... Um, exciting, you know, because when they originally distributed the rights to all of these characters, you know, and then they slowly started getting them back, starting with Spider-Man. So, um, hopefully, eventually, we'll have like a super team movie with you know the X-Men and the, the Avengers and stuff like that. So, yeah, well, I think that's a little hard now since I don't think uh, who has Deadpool or Fox, right? Yeah, Fox still has Deadpool. F- yeah, I don't think Fox is gonna let that go very easily. <laughs> yeah, they. <laughs> this won't. is the only thing working for them right now. So. Um... X Men. Uh, I guess Logan did really well, actually. Yeah, Logan actually did do extremely well. Uh, maybe they could like get the fata- the Fantastic Four and do something. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I think could get Galactus back then. I guess because you know he's part of the Fantastic Four thing. But um, I don't know. Like, who who else owns Sony? Still kind of has Spider Man sort of. Yeah. Or they gave up some rights. I don't know. It's confusing. The whole thing is confusing. I don't know what Sony has. Um. I think Sony I think, only, only had Spider-Man or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think they so. only had Spider-Man. Yeah, they only really need to get Fantastic Four and X-Men. X-Men's the big, the big one since, you know, they're, they're a pretty big thing in Marvel. Yeah. But um, he, he's doing a good job. You know, he got Spider-Man back. So, you know, mm-hmm. that's a big one. And hopefully Homecoming is good so we can actually just keep with this Spider-Man and not move on yeah, to the like, uh, third Spider-Man. I think I read somewhere Tom Holland play, plans on playing Spider-Man for a very long time along with Chris Pratt. Uh, playing Star Lord for a very long time. Yeah, Chris as well. Pratt is really good at Star Lord. So. Yeah. <laughs> so like, really fits that role. Yeah, he does. Along with you know all of, all of the other actors that play their yes. respective characters. So, uh, let's get into the games we have been playing recently. So, um, I guess I'll start with you. So, uh, okay. what have you been doing, good sir? So I've just been playing more Persona Five because that game is really good. I I felt like another like thirty hours since we last talked about it. <laughs> And I'm still, I think I'm like halfway done now. I have like 45 hours in the game right now. And it's still great. You know, I'm getting up to the main plot points now. Since it was mostly just like one off little things, and now the main plot is starting to connect. So that's really cool. The music's so good in that game. I love it. But besides that, I've also been playing a game called Dead Cells, which is like another roguelite. This has been a lot of roguelites this year, and I, I like that since it's like one of my favorite genres. So Dead Cells is sort of like. Uh, a metrovania sort of roguelite sort of like rogue legacy except like the combat's like actually like real good uh-huh. um it just feels really nice uh, think of a uh, castlevania it's sort of like that with like rogue legacy that's like the best way i could describe it uh okay. it's you know it's pretty hard like because rogue legacy works like when you die you, you just have to keep put, grinding right with rogue Legacy. yeah, you, yeah it sort of works like flint hook to like put your money into like uh, power ups and stuff, and you keep that throughout all your runs. This one I feel is a lot better at this since you could complete the game based on your own skill. Like you don't need to have your weapons upgraded or anything. You could get through pretty fine, and that's what I like about it a lot is that you don't really need the upgrades. It just makes it a little easier, but it's still like on you. And I like that a lot since I feel like some like Flint Hook. It's like you need to get those upgrades, or else you're just gonna die. For this one, you don't really need it, but it really helps. Like. One, like, you have this health potion that only has one charge. If you upgrade it, you get two charges of that health potion, and then you can do it up to four charges, which really helps. But you can only really heal. It's not an instant heal. You have to, like, like once you get out of combat, then you can, like, heal yourself because you just get hit when you try to heal yourself. So it's not broken or anything. It just means you could So it's have not, more like, sustain. an instant potion. It's, like, a Yeah, it's, like, you, yeah, you, like, you hold the button and you heal yourself, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. So, um, and you could get hit while the enemy is, um are there so um yeah uh, all the upgrades just feel good like you just get you unlock a new weapon it's there and now you can find it and you can upgrade the weapons to give you like oh plus five percent damage or ten percent damage but it doesn't really matter because all the weapons are just pretty strong by themselves like and they all feel really good like they just they just feel good the combat's very nice um the game looks great too it has this like really nice like um pre-rendered pixelated style it's really weird but it, it looks really nice big chunky uh pixels and stuff it looks nice um 
uh, I got pretty far too. Like, um, I, the game is in early access though, so um, it doesn't have all the content. It has like eleven levels, two bosses, and like fifty weapons, and they're planning to double that in like the next eight months or something. But the game has been doing extremely well. Like, there's been a lot of people streaming it and stuff, and it um, uh, it was like on the top paid the um, top thing of Twitch when it first came out. So I'm like, oh, what is this? And it, it's great. It's a great game. Um, besides that, that's about it really, because my time has been going into that and persona so right. uh, that's about it well since school ended and i started doing my summer backlog challenge i've actually been playing a lot of games so um i guess i'll just get league of legends out of the way right now i'm currently d3 uh 76 lp i'm kind of glad that i managed to get out of d5 and heck even d4 so now i'm d3 hopefully i could stay up there stay consistent and uh keep a good mindset going into the games um, and you know, not get garbage teammates or whatever. But um, on to the summer backlog challenge. Uh, I have been playing a lot of Captain Toad because I plan on reviewing it next week for my video. And Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is definitely one of the most underrated uh, games on the Wii U, I think, because I don't think a lot of people really talked about it that much, and I don't think a lot of people praised it that much. But it's a fun game. Like it's it's like a puzzle platformer, but you don't platform because you can't jump so um it's very fun i really, really do like it um i didn't i didn't know uh, exactly on, on how the game was formatted at first like i finished the first episode and i didn't even know that there were episodes so i was like wait am, am i already done with the game is there only, only 18 levels but no there's an episode two and then there's an episode three and each episode gets progressively harder which i like because the first episode was like way too easy like getting all of the uh diamonds or like you know they're like the equivalent of, of like the uh, star coins or whatever and yeah. um every single level has like a little challenge that you can do after finishing the level so like for example uh there's certain levels where you have to like use the gamepad to like touch and then like it moves the platforms like finish this level with only three touches or like sneak past all the shy guys or whatever you know so those little missions give it that little bit extra challenge if you're up for it and you know you are willing to go back into the into the level and do it so there's definitely a, a lot of replay value here and um you know like i said every, every single level gets progressively harder which i do like uh especially with finding those uh, diamonds and stuff and even those like little challenges and stuff so um it's definitely a good game and i cannot wait to finish it i'm currently on episode three i think that's the last episode unless i'm mistaken and then I played a little bit of Unraveled. I only got through the first level. I played a lot of it over my neighbor's house. But, um, you know, now that I have my own copy, I need to go and get through all that and then continue playing from where I left off. Um, and then I played some Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm 4. Uh, just been doing some story stuff. Not much at all. Uh, just, you know, going through the story. Um, and, yeah, like Sasuke is now back on, like, the good side and stuff. Like, I... I I forget exactly what happened within the third game, but you know now he's now he's battling alongside Naruto again. The so. dude changes sides a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know, it, if you don't really follow Naruto, it does look like you know one second he's bad, one second he's good. But you know, there's a lot of stuff within the story that like contradicts on what he believes and and stuff. So that's why he changes sides a lot, I believe. Anyways, so um, I. Th think that's all i've been playing uh i guess you know some golf with your friends and like some other stuff but you know not much worthy to talk about from there so i guess we could talk about guardians of the galaxy volume 2 now so the movie's yeah. been out for like two weeks now maybe a week and so yeah i think i think it's gonna be three weeks soon oh okay so um the movie's been out for a while if you don't want to hear spoilers because we are going to spoil the shit out of this movie because you know there's a lot to talk about so if you don't want to listen to that, uh, you could end the podcast now. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to talk about the movie. And let's just start from the beginning, because I think that that entire beginning segment was just like so Guardians of the Galaxy, I think. Yeah, yeah the, when they're finding the monster thing, right? Yeah, and then like the uh, credits are rolling, you know, like Chris Pratt as Star-Lord and all that other stuff. So that was, yeah. that was very good, I think, in terms of like opening the movie in a good way yeah again it establishes like the whole thing because I, I actually haven't seen guardians one in a bit yes yeah, so i i saw on tv just for a few seconds when yeah i sort of started, started the same way except it was just um star lord doing whatever and this one's all of them fighting with the musical intro and stuff and yeah you know it introduces all the characters again and what they do and stuff and i think it's a good way to start it with you know nice music and stuff it, it, it was good i liked it a lot um 
a lot of action in the first even though like there's not too much action in the whole movie it's not like the first yeah, one where there's a lot it, more action there's not like that many action sequences i would say other than like the final part I yeah think. like the final part and like the first part yeah and, like, a little bit in the middle uh-huh. there's not it's not too much action it's mainly movie, but, uh, about the story and the characters and how they're like a family and stuff like that you know like how um because like you know star lord finds his dad and stuff and obviously he is not the dad that he wants him to be because he's doing some weird and crazy shit to yeah. the universe and obviously star lord did, did not like that especially when um it was revealed like i knew i knew where the story was going right when um uh oh, yeah gamora was like i don't trust this guy i was like maybe i don't either you know because yeah i mean the uh the main plot is pretty generic is mostly just to build the characters like you know rocket uh gamora drax and uh star lord like it was mostly meant for that the first even one was uh more meant... yondu too yeah and yondu yeah because uh the first one was more meant to just establish them as a part of the marvel universe while this one is like like what most sequels do is to expand on the characters so i think it did that pretty well even though i think the main plot was like a little generic like it, it just worked yeah and the movie is a lot more uh of a comedy than an action sci-fi movie oh the yeah there were so many parts where i was just like what the fuck <laughs> like yeah, um then, that that final part where like um star lord and his dad are like fighting and then like star lord turns into pac-man i felt like that that yeah. was kind of out of place sort of but at the same time i'm like what the hell's going on you know? yeah this, so. this is having a good time in that movie basically and I, I appreciate it i like i like the movie for a totally different reason than i like the first one even though i still think the first one is really good and still my favorite one um i think they both stand out for different reasons the yeah. first one was a good like sci-fi movie you know still having like some of the marvel themes in it it also had that uh surprise factor because no one knew who the hell the guardians of the galaxy were at that point yeah and so. this one was more of a nice sci-fi comedy so yeah they both stand out just, for just building reasons. characters and like yondu i was so surprised at how good yondu was throughout the entire yeah movie. you know him like changing heart and or or not really changing heart but like showing that you know he is not the bad guy that he portrays himself to be so yeah. Um, and you know his interactions with Rocket and how him and Rocket are so similar, and you know s- just stuff like that. This entire movie was pretty much based around family because you know Gamora and her sister Nebula, you know. So there was definitely a lot of conflict between family relations, I would say, and like I don't know, I I felt like the uh, yellow people were kind of like there for the first half, and then we just in annoyance for the rest of the movie. I found. I think that's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i mean yeah it was a little over the place there was like there was the gold people being the enemy and then like the father and then uh yondu's crew and stuff so it's sort of like uh like that and some people criticized that the movie for that but you know i think the movie didn't really care it was just doing yeah, whatever I, it wanted to i still think it worked out it's just that you know the gold people were sort of just there for that beginning segment and then we're just uh, there for the rest because you know rocket stole some batteries or whatever so yeah but, but um yeah I, I think i think it's good like i liked it a lot and i think it is it is a bit mixed but i think it is more on the positive side for people because it's just a fun movie and that's what guardians of the galaxy was anyway yeah so i think it, it hit what it was supposed to do yeah I, and i think yeah i just think that um this movie was just like good for different reasons because you know yeah. the first one had that surprise factor it was supposed to establish the characters and who they were and show them you know become this team of uh four or five people that you know save the galaxy and now this one they've already established that and now they're just trying to get through some conflict relations that they have between each other or you know family members and stuff like that so um but yeah you know the plot was sort of generic, you know, it was very predictable on where it was going, I found, but, you know, it it still worked, and I still liked it as a movie, you know, it's not as bad as a lot of people say, in my opinion, but, you know. No, yeah. It's um, still it's still one of the better Marvel sequels, as you said. Yes, it's, it's way better than, like, Iron Man 2 or, like, Thor 2. Um, so, yeah, I'll place it in the middle ground in terms of good sequels. <laughs> I've seen a lot worse than that, so um, I am glad that it, it turned out pretty good. And um, I watched it twice, so yeah, that's I, I, I was actually surprised when you said you watched it, you know, Thursday or whatever when we saw yeah. it Saturday. I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. I, I liked it. It wasn't a movie I mind watching twice, and I don't usually do that. So yeah, I, I thought it was good. You should watch it. And yeah, I think I think that's about it for that. 
All right. Well, that's the end of the Two Players Podcast, episode 34. Thank you guys for listening once again. And we'll see you guys two weeks from now with the next episode. Later.